हेलो डियर स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर डी सी सक्सेना प्रोफेसर एंड हेड ऑफ द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ फूड इंजीनियरिंग एंड टेक्नोलॉजी एट संत लोंगोवाल इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग एंड टेक्नोलॉजी लोंगोवाल आई एम हेयर टू प्रजेंट द पेपर टेक्नोलॉजी ऑफ मीट पोल्ट्री फिश एंड सी फूड प्रोडक्ट्स इन द प्रजेंट मॉड्यूल वील बी नोइंग द पोस्टमार्टम चेंजेस विच अकर इन फिश एज वेल एज सी फूड and this aspect will be explained to you by my co-author miss kulsum jan hello students welcome to epg pathshala i am kulsum jan from sant longowal institute of engineering and technology today i am going to talk about module number 29 of paper number 8 that's technology of meat poultry fish and seafoods in this module we will be learning about the post mortem changes in fish and seafoods quality attributes of fish flesh including food safety organoleptic features nutritional quality and aptitude to industrial transformation in plants consumption and acceptability of fish and seafoods fish sensorial changes and texture properties are closely linked to freshness along with the antemortem muscle biochemistry postmortem biochemical process are directly linked the final quality attributes so the understanding of post mortem mechanism is a prerequisite for an accurate control of the quality of commercialized fish by the identification of objective markers or the indicators so post mortem tenderization is one of the most important quality attribute of fish muscle loss of freshness is due to complex combination of biochemical chemical and physical processes and is followed by muscle spoilage due to microbiological contamination autolytic modifications include proteases and its action on proteins and connective tissues and also sometimes on fat hydrolysis dendrization is an enzymatic in nature the next one are the physical chemical conditions which involves ph and osmotic pressure they may modulate the proteolytic action of endogenous enzymes sometimes after death an opposing process called tenderization begins with in hours of post mortem and continues during post mortem storage fish muscle is organized as tissue blocks of myomers attached to mycometa this structure makes the flesh inherently soft especially when cooking because fish connective tissue is soluble at low cooking temperatures however there is very little structural change in fish myofibrils post mortem and in fact they are much more stable than mammalians in marked contrast fish eye bands are almost never broken fish flesh quality closely linked to the notion of freshness can be evaluated by four different methods number first sensorial analysis relying on the flavor order 
texture and appearance criteria. Number two, chemical methods including K factor, biogenic amines, lipid hydrolysis, and oxidation. Number three, microbial parameters. When the fish dies, the bacteria from skin, gills, and intestines may proliferate freely. That is causing microbiological data include total counts, that is bacteria number estimated by microscopy and specific metabolic evaluation. DMA, identification of pathogenic bacteria by immunology or molecular biology. Number four, physical methods. Use of the Kramer tool with measures perpendicular to muscle fiber orientation, which can give repeatable mechanical measures. Quality attributes of fish flesh, including food safety, organoleptic features, nutritional quality, and aptitude to industrial transformation influence the composition and acceptability of fish as food. Fish sensorial chains and texture properties are closely linked to freshness along with antimortem muscle biochemistry. Postmortem biochemical process are directly linked to final quality attributes. The understanding of postmortem mechanism is prerequisite for an accurate control of the quality of commercialized fish by identification of objective markers and indicators. Postmortem tenderization is one of the most important quality attributes of fish muscle. Loss of freshness is due to complex combination of biochemical, chemical and physical processes and is followed by muscle spoilage due to microbial contamination. Autolytic modifications include protease action on proteins and connective tissue and also fat hydrolysis. Tenderization is enzymatic in nature. Physiochemical conditions that is pH, osmotic pressure may modulate the proteolytic action of endogenous enzymes. The loss of quality in fishery products depends on several intrinsic and extrinsic factors such as the species, spawning, feeding habits, temperature of water, catch methods and storage conditions. After harvesting, there is a progressive decline in the initial quality of the fish because of the following. Number one, intrinsic. Number two, chemical. Number three, physical chains, sometimes called autolysis. Chains resulting from bacteria growth and metabolism is known as chemical chains. Along with antimortem muscle biochemistry, postmortem biochemical processes are directly linked to final quality attributes. The understanding of postmortem mechanism is a prerequisite for an accurate control of the quality of commercialized fish by the identification of optic to markers or maybe indicators. Postmortem tenderization is one of the most important quality attributes of fish muscle. Tenderization is enzymatic in nature. Physiochemical conditions, pH, osmotic pressure may modulate the proteolytic action of endogenous enzymes. Loss of freshness is due to a complex combination of biochemical, 
chemical and physical process and is followed by muscle storage due to microbial contamination. Autolytic modifications include protease action on proteins and connective tissue and also fat hydrolysis. Proteolytic mechanism involved in post-mortem disorganization of fish muscle by characterizing the myofibrillar components undergoing proteolysis as well as by studying the involved proteases especially culpins and their effects in vitro on myofibrillar proteins. Proteolysis of cytoskeleton compounds results in myofilament degradation. In fish, depending on species, they may include degradation of titin, nebulin, dystrophin, alpha actinin, release, myosin proteolysis, and tropomyosin delocalization. Conversely, in postmortem, bovine muscle, desmin is an excellent substrate for calpins and it's largely degraded at 4 degrees centigrade during the aging process. The costomers, which link sarcomers to the sarcolemma, are also degraded within 24 hours in postmortem. Most of the chains are common among different fish species, but they may occur at different rates. In particular, sea bass muscle chains include the detachment of sarcolemma, the degradation of titin and nebulin, as well as the release of proteolysis of alpha actinin from the Z line and the degradation of dystrophin, a sarcoplasmic 16 KDA protein identified as nucleoside diphosphate kinase, was also shown to undergo proteolysis upon storage. Connective tissue collagen is degraded in fish after death as shown by scanning electron microscopic analysis of muscle as a progressive breakdown of collagen junctions, which is between the mycometa and the muscle fibers. It's all happening during storage in ice. The structural change in collagen fibrillar network in fish correlates with the postmortem tenderization. In case of fish muscle, which is organized as tissue blocks of myomers attached to mycometa, this structure makes the flesh inherently soft, especially when cooking because fish connective tissue is soluble at low cooking temperatures. However, there is very little structural change in fish myofibrils during postmortem, and in fact, they are much more stable than mammalian. Beef and sheep structural chains are well characterized and show significant breaks in eye band and costumers after seven days of storage. In marked contrast, fish eye band are almost never broken. The cytoskeletal proteins of fish and mammals are degraded within days of post-mortem. So, it's surprising that fish myofibrils are structurally stable. Therefore, mechanical distribution is required to demonstrate the fragility of fish myofibers. Both fish and mammals show myofibers to connective tissue, that is endomysium. Detachments within 24 
hours of post-mortem. Quantification of these breaks demonstrates that they are associated with fish fillet texture and probably account for much of the early texture chains. The connective tissue of mammals and fish, especially the endomysium, is very stable during post-mortem, but it's detached from the myofibers. Endomysium detachment is due to cytoskeletal breaks, but not to degradation of the connective tissue. Pyramysium shows some weakening by scanning electron microscopy of muscle extracts, but it's rare to see extensive breaks. The mycometa is also mechanically weakened during storage and is very heat labile. It is the fragility of the connective tissue which contributes to fillet gapping and long-term storage texture chains. During post-mortem, deterioration of fish flesh results from complex combination of physical, chemical, biochemical and microbial processes. However, the first chains occurring in post-mortem fish muscle are due to endogenous enzymes promoting proteolysis of muscle proteins as well as the connective tissue. Moreover, fat hydrolysis also occur. Indeed, the muscle is not significantly contaminated by bacteria at this stage. The demise of a fish begins a series of irreversible chains which lead to spoilage and loss of quality. The natural process is first the rigor mortis occurs which is then followed by dissolution of rigor. Then the autolysis occurs which can be slowed down if there is proper handling and storage procedures for fish. Moreover, bacterial attack can also be prevented by proper handling. Now, the next, which is protein denaturation, it can also be reduced by proper handling and proper care of the fish. On death, the circulatory system stops and the ATP levels drop and the muscle comes in a continual stage of rigidness known as rigor mortis. In actual muscle consists of several proteins actively involved in contraction. The two major proteins, actin and myosin combine in the presence of calcium ions to form actomyosin. ATP then supplies the energy for contraction and later also the energy for the removal of the calcium ions via a calcium pump. This breaks the actomyosin complex leaving the muscle ready for the further contraction. When ATP drops, calcium ions leak, forming actomyosin. However, there is insufficient ATP for the calcium pump to operate, and so the actomyosin complex remains unbroken. Enzymes in the flesh and gut previously involved in metabolism now catalyze autolytic reactions in which various compounds decompose. Enzymes in the flesh break down desirable compounds into tasteless or bitter ones. 
while as gut enzymes attack the internal organs, turning them into a soupy mess and allowing bacteria to enter the flesh. In a living fish, bacteria are present in the gut and skin but the flesh which they are prevented from entering remains sterile. Once autolysis begins, however, the bacteria are able to enter the flesh, whereupon they multiply rapidly and decompose the muscle. Anaerobic bacteria, those bacteria which operate in the absence of oxygen, produce a particularly foul type of spoilage, which results in an inedible fish. A number of chemical chains take place during autolysis, which is indicated by slimy texture. Denaturation of proteins involve the destruction of its secondary, tertiary and quaternary structure, reducing the protein to a simple polypeptide chain. A number of the factors including slow freezing and variability of storage conditions cause this denaturation. A denatured protein has not only lost its ability to function as an enzyme but also its water holding capacity. The results in denatured fish flesh dripping excessively when thawed. A situation known as drip thaw and appearing white, dull and spongy and upon chewing becomes fibrous and tasteless. A living fish has flesh pH of 7. However, after death, residual glycogen is broken down via glycolysis to pyruvic acid and then lactic acid. As it happens, the flesh becomes more acidic. If the pH remains above 6.6, .6, the texture is reasonably soft. But below this level, the flesh becomes firm and eventually unacceptable. TVB, that is total volatile base, is the measure of total amount of a variety of nitrogen containing substances which are produced during storage. An example of a volatile base present in the flesh is a trimethylamine which is formed from reduction of trimethylamine oxide. The odorless and tasteless compound is reduced by invading bacteria to TMA, which is characterized by its fishy smell. TMA though only becomes useful as a quality index during the middle and the late stage of spoilage after the bacteria have invaded the fish. Trimethylamine oxide is converted in the muscle tissue into dimethylamine and formaldehyde by enzyme action. During frozen storage, the formaldehyde is able to crosslink with protein, thus denaturing the muscle structure. This fish loses water when it's thawed and when cooked has a tough and fibrous texture. Tests for freshness. There are various tests used for checking the freshness of fish. Number one, by measuring the pH of the fish and the levels of various compounds present the amount of autolysis that has occurred and hence the freshness of the fish can be measured. One of the change in fish muscle is protein denaturation. 
During cold storage, the proteins undergo molecular cross-linking with form aldehyde, causing the muscle protein to become less soluble. Deterioration can be assessed by adding 5% of sodium chloride, NaCl or common salt, and then separating the matrin, the soluble and insoluble proteins which are already present. Increasing insoluble proteins indicates longer storage and greater deterioration mainly of texture. Nucleotide breakdown. The concentration of ATP, ADP, AMP, IMP, inosine and hyposenthene that is the different compounds formed over time as ATP breaks down so can be measured by high performance liquid chromatography the ratio of in inosine and hyposanthine to the total amount of the above substances is represent as a percentage value of less than 20% represents fresh fish while as anything greater is an indicative of spoilage. De decreasing pH pH is a possible test of textural strength with anything below 6.6 .6 resulting in noticeably firmer flesh than that of fresh fish. TVB that is total volatile base whose amount is measured by distilling a fish extract and determining the base concentration by titration against acid. A fresh sample of Jack McRae would have a value of 19 to 21 mg TVB per 100 grams while as an aging sample would be nearer 30 mg TVB and per 100 gram. Lipid oxidation and hydrolysis. Oxidation leads to rancidity, the degree of which is commonly evaluated by measuring the free fatty acid and peroxide concentrations. Hydroperoxides can be measured by mixing the fish oil with potassium iodide and measuring the amount of iodine liberated by titration against thiosulfate. The hydroperoxides, the iodine to iodine, which is liberated according to the following equation. 2I gives I2 plus 2 electrons. A further measure of oxidation is the TBA test. This involves extracting some fish muscle into trichloroacetic acid and treating it with thiobarbituric acid, the TBA. The TBA reacts with monoaldehyde, a substance formed during oxidation to form a red compound. The intensity of the red color which is proportional to the concentration of the monoaldehyde can be measured using a spectrophoto. So students, let's now summarize what we have learned in this module. Fish generally harbors a large population of bacteria on skin, surface, gills and in the intestines, particularly in case of cultured fish. Usually the bacterial load is in the range of 103 to 105 per square centimeter in the case of skin surface, 104 to 106 per gram tissue in the case of gill and 105 
to 108 per gram of the gut contents. When the fish is dead, these bacteria enter the body, proliferate and cause deterioration of the muscles. The multiplication of bacteria in fish is controlled by either icing or freezing methods. During freezing, cold sensitive bacteria die out and the surviving cold tolerant bacteria take longer time to multiply. Therefore, the rate of the bacterial spoilage is slowed down. Usually, a shelf life extension of 8 to 15 days is obtained by icing which is done properly. Freezing of the fish causes death of bacteria to the extent of 60 to 90 percent depending on the initial bacterial count. The survivors are mainly gram-positive bacteria which cannot grow and can cause the spoilage of frozen fish. However, upon thawing at ambient temperatures, these bacteria can multiply and cause spoilage of the thawed fish. In post rigor stage, bacterial spoilage becomes very fast. That's all about the post-mortem genes in the fish and seafoods. Thank you. The rise of the muscle pH from acidic to alkaline range from accumulation of volatile bases like ammonia and trimethylamine produced by spoiled fish enhances bacterial growth. Trimethylamine is produced by the reduction of trimethyl oxide by bacterial enzyme as well as by tissue enzymes. Following the death of the fish, the brain controls as well as blood circulation ceases. This results in an inability to resynthesize the ATP and to transport various materials essential in living cells. The death stiffening of the muscle tissue referred to as rigor mortis occurs sooner or later and glycolysis forms some organic acids to decrease in pH values. After finishing the rigor mortis, the muscle tissue loses the stiffness, followed by autolysis forming amino acids and other low molecular weight compounds. Then microorganisms grow by utilizing these compounds which exist before and after autolysis and subsequently attack high molecular weight compounds. During the spoilage by microorganisms, some specific putrefactive substances such as trimethylamine and histamine are formed depending on fish species. When glycogen is degraded to lactic acid, the pH of the muscle tissues begin to fall. From initial physiological values of 7.2 to 7.4, to the ultimate postmortem pH of 6 or less 5.6 for tuna, bonito and mackerel. In most cases, however, the pH of the fish muscle hardly goes down so much as reported for warm-blooded animals, giving a value of 6.2 to 6.6 .6, or even higher as in case of lake perch. Rate of pH decrease considerably depends on initial glycogen content of meat. Higher the glycogen content, lower is the pH value. 
Dear students, by now you have seen the important aspects of post-mortem changes which occur in fish and seafood, which has been very well explained by my co-author. Now, the next process in the case of fish and seafood processing is fish grading, chilling and freezing with respect to shelf life of the products and this aspect will be explained to you in the next module. Thank you.